say, that cover gives me a lot of nostalgia. Not for the miniseries itself, I think I missed out on this the same way I missed out on the Mecha Madness special, but for the Genesis game. If you don't remember, the Sonic & Knuckles title screen was basically this image, and it was glorious to me as a child. That being said though, how does it stand as a capstone to the miniseries? Well, after reading it again, I can at least say I still don't know why they call it a quest. Like I said, the cover is good, it's basically a copy of the Genesis title screen, and it captures that scene pretty well, even if it is a little bit static compared to the more animated covers we've had leading up to this. After the third text recap page and the second comic recap page, we start off in the cockpit of the Death Egg yet again, with Robotnik enjoying his imminent victory. Tails attempts to slide out of the cockpit to think up a way to stop him, but is met with Sonic, who attacks, thinking he's just another SWAT bot. Thankfully, Tails is unhurt, and explains what's going on to Sonic, who quickly leaps at Robotnik in the cockpit, only to be met with a large sheet of plexiglass in front of him. Robotnik heard his approach, and not only put down the protective glass, but also put down one behind Sonic, trapping him, and starts to flood the small space with poison gas. But he didn't plan on Tails going Kool-Aid Man on him. Tails uses the SWATBOT's jet thrusters to shatter the Death Egg's eye from outside, and then uses its laser blaster to take out the controls. While this does save Sonic, it basically fries the navigation systems on the Death Egg. Robotnik escapes through a hatch just as the island pops back up out of the water, and the Death Egg gets launched up into the air by the force of the island, as Knuckles looks on, swearing to stop Robotnik if he tries anything like that again. Thanks, Knuckles, you were so integral to this story. But Robotnik's not down for the count yet. From his bunker, he summons a new foe for Sonic to fight. Silver Sonic, who looks far more imposing here than he does in the actual Sonic 2. Sonic immediately attacks the robot, but despite its heavy design, it's easily able to swat Sonic away and take his attacks without flinching. But of course, all Sonic has to do is hit it with a loose wire and it's totally finished. Cut back to Robotnik, who has yet another means of defending himself, the Exoskeleton, a super suit he psionically linked to the Death Egg to enhance his own power. But before he can confront Sonic, Sonic surprises him by taking control of the Silver Sonic Husk, basically using it to fight Robotnik on equal terms. How exactly are these characters controlling the innards of the robots like this? I'm, I'm quite curious. But it is actually pretty refreshing to see the two of them go at each other like this for once, and while they might be fighting each other in enhanced states, the fight scene does feel like it has some gravitas behind it. Sonic eventually just flicks Robotnik up through the wall, when Tails explains that their fighting damaged so many critical systems that the whole place could go up at any moment. Sonic and Tails make their way to the exit, grabbing an armful of rings on their way out, jumping out and having Tails float them down to the ground after abandoning the useless Silver Sonic skeleton. And then we get ourselves a nice big boom, so massive and powerful that everyone on Mobius seems to feel it. After taking a moment to enjoy their handiwork, they finally manage to get in contact with Sally, who tells them that the King's condition has gone critical and they need to head back to Knothole right away. And finally, we see Robotnik parachuting down into his penthouse office after finding out that Snively renamed the city to Snivopolis. He's none too pleased. Luckily for Snively, he got landed on, so he doesn't have to face Robotnik's wrath just yet. Well, that was a thing that just happened. It was an ending. I mean, this issue was probably the best of the three, but I would say that it's only average as far as the comic's quality goes. It brings the story to a quick end, at least, and has a lot of nice action to it compared to the first two issues. Sonic's fight with Silver Sonic and then his fight with Robotnik were both pretty good, even if both of them ended rather anticlimactically. But there was a lot that sort of bothered me about the miniseries as a whole. The whole chainmail ring shield Robotnik boasted about didn't really feel like it impacted the story in any way, nor did we actually see it, not even when he had the whole robot suit fight with Sonic. Knuckles and the Chaotix's involvement ended after a page in the third issue, making the whole situation with Angel Island feel really superfluous, and doesn't really justify Knuckles getting top billing on the cover, that's for sure. And again, the whole quest angle didn't really amount to much. This wasn't a quest, it was just another mission and adventure for Sonic and Tails, starting out as a simple errand to fetch some magic rings, with most of the action coming because of pure dumb luck. 
And of course, while I didn't bring it up in the last issue, it and this issue also very heavily overuse the over-explaining dialogue. There are a few good shreds of humor sprinkled throughout the book to break up the tension, and of course Robotnik's always good for a laugh, but the whole time I was reading this mini, I was just completely underwhelmed. In terms of the artwork, this issue definitely felt like it was the most consistent of the three, but at the cost of a lot of the more impressive shading and angles that were seen in the first and second issue, opting for a more all-around simplistic style. Though that doesn't hurt the action scenes at all, which are all very well drawn and choreographed, if a little short, as I said before. And I have to say, I really like this Silver Sonic design. A pity that we won't really be seeing this particular one again. And so we close the chapter on yet another mini-series. I'd say it was better than the Sally Mini, and maybe on par, maybe a little bit better than the Tails Mini, but definitely not as good as the Knuckles Mini, which still remains the high point for the series' secondary books. Next time, we're moving on from all of this as we move back to the main book with issue 42 to see what everyone else was up to during all of this. See you all next time, everyone.